Good morning. As I record this video, the number of deaths from COVID-19 in Wisconsin has reached nearly 200 people, all of whom were created in the image of God, and we mourn the loss of those who have died. Additionally, there have been nearly 4,000 reported cases of the virus found in our state. You have probably heard by now and are aware that out of an abundance of caution and in a desire to protect the other 5.85 million residents of Wisconsin from COVID-19, Governor Evers has made the very difficult decision to extend the Safer at Home order until May 26. This affects the status of countless businesses, industries, and jobs, to say nothing of the students, teachers, and professors whose end of the school year activities will be completely disrupted. As I take time to reflect on so many of the complexities that we are facing in the midst of this, there are a number of thoughts that I wrestle with in my mind. Some of the concerns are regarding just the enjoyment of basic liberties, our economic stability, the educational experiences and employment of the next generation, the use of entitlements and increasing government dependency, the expectations and enforcement of social distancing and masking protocols. I ask myself, how do I live graciously and godly in a world with so many differing opinions about what is best and right? Should I give up my non-essential rights for the perceived safety of others? How do I care for and have a real concern for those who have lost their livelihood as a result? How do I endeavor to give hope to a young adult whose experiences and expectations are melting away and who wonders what the future will hold? Can I push myself and others to a place of real dependence on God for provision through hard work rather than placing our trust in government programs? Can I willingly defer my own comfort and convenience so others have a feeling of safety from infection? I hope in those questions that you aren't hearing an opinion or commentary. They are just questions. However, I'm sure that as I inquire about those topics, there are a variety of opinions we all hold, especially when it comes to what degree or level to which we hold them. We may ask, how many liberties am I willing to give up? How much economic instability can I tolerate? How many high school or college experiences does one need to be happy and fulfilled? How much government aid is acceptable, and at what point have I stopped trusting in God? How many safety precautions must I take to satisfy or anger the next person I come in contact with? Is your mind swirling yet? Maybe you're a very decisive person, and you've already thought through all these topics, degrees, and scenarios before now. My goal today isn't to give you some guideline and standard for how to exactly go about answering these. What I want us to see is that we can trust and rest in the principle of principles of God's Word to guide us in these areas, and more importantly, to help us as we interact with one another in light of our differing views. As we do, we must seek to be people of the Word, allowing the Scripture and the Spirit to guide us into thinking speaking, and living rightly during these disorienting days. I believe the events of the past month have the great potential to change our cultural expectation and awareness for many years to come. Let's face it, we live in a very divided country, and if you don't think so, just scroll through a Facebook or Twitter feed for a few minutes. There is hate and vitriol being spewed from all sides regarding how the coronavirus epidemic is being handled or mishandled, and I'm sure we all have our opinions as well. On top of that, we live in a country consumed with rights. In fact, we have an entire section of our Constitution labeled the Bill of Rights, and as Americans, we hold them very dear. However, as Christians, we must be cautious about how we view those rights and make use of them. I believe it is helpful for us to ask ourselves, does the exercise and expression of my American rights ever become an obstacle to my living out the gospel? I hope it doesn't come as a surprise to you that more than a few times in God's word, 
we are called to give up our rights. As I have been challenged by that reality and by some of the decisions made over the past weeks, I have needed to regularly bring myself back to the reminder of the truths from Romans chapter 12, verses 14 through 19. As I close, I'm going to read starting at verse 14, and I'll give some short comments as I go along. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 14, and I'll read just down through verse 19. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. You know, we may not be at the level of persecution yet. I understand that. But when and if it does come, let's not be taken by surprise. But as Paul tells us here, to speak blessings. Verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. As much as many of us have rejoiced at having some extra time at home, or in my case, extra time with family, at the same time, there are so many who are separated from loved ones, either in hospitals or care facilities, and there is real loneliness in those places. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. I want to encourage us to be careful how we express our feelings about these things in conversations. Can I encourage us not to make assumptions? Verse 17, repay no one evil for evil but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. I'm pretty sure this would include six feet of social distancing, possibly even deferring to others by wearing a face mask. Verse 19, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Do you perceive wrong motivations by those in authority who seem out for their own agenda? Can I just remind us, God knows. I want to encourage us, as I close today, to live out our role as Christians or citizens of heaven rather than expressing demanding, or exercising our rights as Americans. I hope you will take some time on your own to think through some of the questions I asked earlier and seek God's wisdom in his word and allow his spirit to work in your heart regarding them. Again, I've included a transcript of my comments below if that is helpful. Let's pray. Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask for your help. Lord, we're amazed at the ways that you work. Lord, the, the, the mystery of it all. That you work in mysterious ways to bring about your glory. And Lord, I ask that we would rest in those truths today. Lord, that, that, that we would be reminded of how we ought to live in this world and with one another. Lord, forgive us when we have opinions and and grow angry and and are uh, willing to say and do things that 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 would be unkind. Lord, help us to live gently and calmly and reasonably in this world. Work in us, I pray, as we face these situations, and I pray that we would do so for your glory. We ask these things in your name, the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Have a good and godly day.